14 years of photography, I've never really shot landscapes. I've shot people. So today, that's what I'm gonna have a go at. So I've never really shot landscapes. The closest I've ever come is when you go to a, a wedding and you have a bride and groom and a sunset and they're a small part of the frame and a, and a large image of a landscape. But I've never really set out to actually shoot landscapes. Uh, it's, it's a different way of shooting. It's interesting. I thought now that we're in our third lockdown and we're dealing with a lot of behind the scenes business things, but the fact that we can't open our studios meant I had a little bit more time to go and play with the camera a bit more, which is when I'm working and shooting five days a week plus, uh, I don't often have a time to play. So we went out a couple of days ago with the cameras and we decided to, to film it for you. Uh, we, it was a different skill set, a different way of shooting. I often shoot a wide open 2.8 on, on the, on the 7200 or more on, on the small lenses. And it was just very interesting to then go and shoot in F8 and F11 and F22 and just see what we got from it. And actually, it, I think I took a lot away from it as well. Uh, if you'll see in the video, we, we shot from just before sunset to, to when the sun came up. We, uh, I, I wanted to shoot a number of images for underexposing and overexposing. Because we were shooting with the land in front of us and then the sky, the dynamic range, even on the R5, can't always handle that. So it was a case of shooting numerous shots to then merge them in together. And as you see, as the film goes on, I'll, I'll put the settings up on screen and I'll put the different images up on screen and some final images as well. You'll see that the images got richer and richer as, as, as the sun started coming up and it just started filling the sky with a bit more color. Uh, have a look at the video. If you do like the video, please do subscribe. Uh, we're still trying to build our, our following here and give it a like and tell the algorithm uh, at YouTube to show the videos to more people. Uh, I'll show the video and then I'll come back to it at the end. Morning, it's Sean. As I probably just said in the uh, intro, uh, I spent 14 years photographing people and now it's in lockdown, there's no people to be photographed. So I'm gonna give landscape photography a try. It's something I've always thought, what's the point to it by me? Because a million other people are taking the same picture, so why should I go and do anything different? But I just started looking at some work lately and really liked it. So I thought I'd come out this morning, it's just for sunrise in uh, January and we're going to see behind us we have uh, a, a pond how can you switch around so we've got a pond and some hills and i know from running through here that the sun is about to come up over those hills over there so hopefully the sun will give us a nice look this morning i am lucky enough to have some good kits so i'm photographing on a canon r5 I've got a 35mm, which is the widest I've got for the Canon R5. Uh, it should be okay. It's giving us a reasonable wide angle this morning. I also then have a GoPro set up on behind here. So what we can do is we can cut to the GoPro so you can get my point of view as to what I'm seeing and so on as we go along. Hopefully we'll get some half decent images when the sun comes up. All right, so I'm all set up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot in aperture priority. I'm gonna shoot at F11. I watched some videos, so I know the kind of things to do. Uh, shooting aperture priority, because I always did when I've shot outside for weddings and portraits, it's always aperture priority. The camera's clever enough to figure out what's going on. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is, because I'm now on a tripod, is I'm going to shoot multiple shots. So I'm going to do uh, expose for the sky because if you look over there, we have a real difference between the hills and the sky. I, this is like a four or five stop difference there. So what I want to do is do one shot where I'm exposing for the sky, one more exposing for the land, and then we'll merge them later on in Photoshop. Hopefully we'll come back to that. So right now I'm shooting an F11, uh, ISO of 200. In fact, I'm going to bring the ISO down uh, uh, even more. And then I'll shoot F11. Let's double check on that one. Now this, the, the R5 is new to me, so I don't even know where the ISO is sometimes. There we go, I found it. Lovely, so we are two stops over. Quick shot, I'm on a two second delay for that one. I was gonna take a shot where it's showing the, um, uh, where we're exposing for the land here. And then I'm gonna go for two stops under to really bring out that richness in the sky, which is lovely actually. If I was recording here, then you'd be able to see. I'll do those shots again. Two steps over. Once I've got that shot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the location ever so slightly to over there and get a bit more of the lake and the uh, sky and as the sun comes up. So here you can see the back of the camera, I'm on F11, ISO 200, 
and in Aperture Priority it tells us we're exposed but because of the difference in the bright of the sky and the dark and the ground it, it's getting a bit confused. You can see the histograms going very dark and very bright. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one shot at minus two, at minus two stops under using the Aperture Priority exposure compensation and that brings out this lovely kind of colour in the sky here. That's hard to see with this. I've got a two second delay. Lovely. Now I'm going to put that right in the middle. Take the shot again. Hand off. Lovely. Now once more with two stops over and what you see then is that all this kind of detail is going to come in in the, in the ground here. Now we have a much longer exposure obviously and then what we're going to do now is merge image three, two and one to get a very nice uh, hopefully one of collection. I like the shadow detail up here by the way, or the silhouette detail. There we go. Cool. So we've got and I'm going to bring the GoPro up a little bit so you can see this better on the GoPro. We've got a lovely bit of purple, uh, pinky purple hue to the sky over there where the sun's now coming up and hitting the side of that cloud with a wash of it. This, there's actually not a lot of clouds in the sky which means we're not going to get a fantastic sunrise because we want the sun to be hitting the underside of the, of the clouds. Uh, but that's quite nice in the corner so I'm doing a quick shot here. Uh, I've got the, I'm actually going to do a couple of different compositions here. One where the land is two thirds of the um, composition and then one where it's a third of the competition and we'll do the whole rule thirds thing. Uh, I'm just going to be, I'm choosing raw and JPEG, uh, just so I can show you on the screen. I've got two stops over, lovely, and I'm going to go for right in the middle, lovely, and then uh, two stops under. By the way, I lied about my settings, I'm on F8 rather than F11, but I'm now going to change to F11. I don't even make a massive difference. So we're on F11, uh, 20th of a second. Uh, let's put the, that in the middle. And do one more two stops over. And then I'll merge them later on. So what I'm going to decide to do now is actually because my camera angle is quite low and what I thought about the image I've just taken is that that clump of grassy stuff is actually a bit too dominant in the scene. So what I'm going to do is just quickly uh, bring the tripod up. This is a Manfrotto 055 or something like that. Uh, I'll put it up on screen. It's, um, it's heavy. It's a proper heavy tripod but I think that's what you need for this. I normally use this one in the studio. Let me just see how my composition is there. Oh, that's better, I prefer that. But I am off and I've now got this little line that the camera tells me if I'm level or not, which is quite handy. Because I've never taken a straight picture in my life. Alright, again I'm going to do one with the land two thirds a third and then we've got to go for the sky. So let's go back to starting at two stops under. Focus on just under the horizon. Yeah, that one, I'm now going to turn off my focus actually keep these all consistent as I go through. Uh, there, there. And now two steps over and I've just realised something I've done which is to I've excluded that bit of pink quite a lot. So let me just come around a little bit differently. There we go. So let's do the process one more time. Two steps under. Lovely. Bang in the middle. And now two steps over. And now I'm going to very quickly go for the other shot, which is having the land taking up a third after the first kind of line of rule of thirds line. So let's come around here a little bit more. Slightly off level. Then again, just because level in camera doesn't mean it's going to be level in the real world. Uh, let's do that. We'll go to this one in reverse. So that one is exposed for the, allegedly exposed for the land, but it's still very dark. Let's go three stops over, which is quite something. Three stops over on that, and that's a quarter of a second on that. All right, and then let's go for bang in the middle, and then nice rich tones in the sky. 
and now it's going to be two stops under to really bring out that sky. So I'm going to do one more on this one, and that's going to be three stops under. Let's see if that makes that's going to be too dark. Nice, no, let's leave it two stops under. All right, I like that composition. There's a lot of gubbins on the screen, but I really like that on the back of the side. As long as we can bring in the land later on, it makes sense of that. That'd be a really nice shot. Let's go wait for the sun to come up now. According to our weather app, the sun is going to come up in about four minutes' time. So you can start to see it now slowly rising over the uh, hill over here. Um, I've now, oh, I've also switched the GoPro to the back now, so hopefully you can see when I'm taking shots a little bit better than just from the above part of things. It's all starting to get a bit bright. We don't have a lot of cloud in the sky. The, the, the sun over there, which I think is heading that way, which might reflect some of the uh, sun, but I don't think it's going to be in in time. Uh, I'm just going to see what we get from here and then we'll edit them later on. Uh, but as soon as the sun comes up, we'll show you again. So the sun's literally about to come up. We can't see it in the camera because it's not going to, in your camera because it's not going to work very well. But I'm still on F11. I've got a lovely glow coming up from the sky over there. Uh, we'll show you in the back of the GoPro here. Uh, let's do that, which is again two stops on. There's amazing colours in that sky. Uh, let's come back to neutral. Again, that's great actually. I was a bit worried that we weren't going to get enough colour in the sky before. And uh, let's expose for the ground in front of me, pretty much to those. I also had a thought, which is if I go to F22, uh, what we might get is quite often if you see long exposure nighttime shots, you'll see that kind of starburst effect coming out of the headlights and lights, or street lights and so on. I thought, well, maybe we'll get the same with the sun if we got F22. Don't know if that works or not, but we'll give it a go. So once the sun does come up, I'll do one F11 and then I'll do a couple of F22 and mix up a bit and see what we get. So the sun has just peaked over, literally a second ago, it's just peaked over the edge. So now in here, oh, it's just a little bit of sun there. That's nice. Let's do one of these. I realize we're only taking the one picture today, but I thought rather than going and getting 20 pictures, we'll get one and hopefully I'll do it half justice. Uh, let's come up to there. And uh, two over, oh, three over to get the ground in now. Now let me try my F22 experiment. I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but let's go to that. That's the most I can do on this. That's giving us a sixth of a second. And a fiftieth of a second. And let's see about this sun star bursting thing. The ducks are having a fight. There's like four of them just flying around, just trying to kill each other, I think. Uh, let's go just to expose to, so what I've actually done there is I've gone three stops under to expose just for the sun itself. That's lovely. That's coming right up. They seem to be settling. You can't actually see where they are. No, they're just behind the reeds actually. But there were four of them just all badgering around there a while ago. Right, that sun is just coming up so quickly now. It's amazing that we sat around for 40 minutes or so waiting for it and suddenly it's just going to come up in seconds. I better not keep staring at it or that's all I'm going to see for the next 20 minutes. Uh, looking at the back of my screen here, it's just peeking over. So I'm going to get one like that. Let's go for that. F, even F22, that's one four hundredth of a second just exposed to the sun. It just tells you how bright the thing is. Right, let's go for... Actually, no, I'm going to go two under. One under, one stop under, using exposure compensation, which I explained, hopefully I explained earlier. Um, then the middle is nice. One over, two over, and three over. Morning. Morning, guys. That's obviously going to give us six images that we can then merge together. In this. We live in a very friendly town. It's quite nice everyone just talks to you. Even in lockdown, people are friendly around here. 
Right, I'll wait a couple of minutes for the sun to come up a little bit higher and then I'll take some more shots. Didn't even take off. <laughs> you filming? Yeah. Cool. Did you film that? Yeah. That's brilliant. Um, the sun is literally coming up. You can see it's hitting me now, I think. It's, 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 it's a bright sun. It's a lovely morning. For, for a January morning, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, so I'm going to go for, I mean, to be honest, it's not quite high enough to give us a different picture than we took a minute ago. I'm maybe going to give it another, well, let's see what we get. In fact, I could use just one of these shots to merge with the other one. The camera hasn't moved all the time. And by the way, if you're wondering where I focused, I actually focused on the hills earlier. Um, and then everything back to that to a couple of feet in front of me is going to be in focus. Um, we'll just wait until it comes up. Uh, give us another minute or so, and then I'll show you two, one more shot with the sun coming through. That'll probably be a shot of the day. I just want to get one. And then I'll, I'll go back to the studio and show you guys how we're going to edit it and what we're going to do and the, the results that we get. All right, sun's up. I'm at f22. I'm going to do a shot. Yeah, that's going to be really nice. I'm three under. Uh, you know the process by now. Three or two under, middle, correctly exposed, two over, and then we'll merge them later on. The ducks and everything are going crazy again. And there's a siren as well, just to, for this time in the morning. Let's take one there. Let's go there. Three more. Bang in the middle. So I'm doing six just to give us a real range of shots. What we can get. I only want to well, I hope I'll be able to merge later on. I'm quite know what I'm doing with merging. Helen knows better than I do. Ah now weirdly the thing I said about having the uh, the sun is a bit of a starburst, it happened when I was overexposing rather than under, because I think it's when the sunbeams are coming down across there. So there we go, I've got six shots in a row. Uh, we'll go back to the office and we'll have a look at them and I'll see if I can make at least one decent picture out of all this. And uh, we'll take Tara off for a walk now and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the Sunday morning. See where Tara is, shall we? Tara! <laughs> She's tied to a tree like an abandoned dog. Aren't you? Okay, you okay? Should we go for a walk now? Should we go for a walk now? Yay! Yay! <laughs> Good girl. Good girl for waiting. So we did take Tara for a walk, you'd be glad to hear. Uh, we had a good long walk and she ran and got very muddy in, in the water. Uh, hopefully that made sense. I just wanted to get, not one image as I said in the video, but I wanted to get uh, one framing, one shot that I could be happy with. Uh, and it was a case of testing kind of what worked better, whether it was before the sun came up, just it was coming up or a little bit after. Uh, it was a great day for it. We were lucky with the weather. We actually, and I'll put the image up on screen now, which is the following day, it was a frosty morning and I went back down quickly and took another shot with the frost on the ground. Uh, it gave a completely different look and texture. So you can see the real differences between um, the, the two days and what difference the weather and how the, the weather plays a part and everything else. Um, I'm actually quite tempted to do a lot more landscape work. So uh, if you'd like to see some more videos behind the scenes of somebody who's got an understanding of photography, but not necessarily of landscapes, going out and finding their way through it, leave a comment in, in below. And as soon as we're allowed to, with lockdown, we'll see how far we can go and how many images we can take. We're, we're lucky that we live by a beach and we get great sunsets, so maybe the next one will try and be a sunset shot. I hope that was of use to you. Please do like and subscribe to the video, and we'll see you next time.